Hey everyone, welcome to Revolution 2020 from the loft. This is episode number 15. And I have to say, welcome back. I took last week off as the last couple weeks I have been in the process of moving. I did not leave Wilmer. I actually moved uh, downtown Wilmer and I live in a pretty great uh, little house now. But it's been a couple weeks of moving, of going to the dump a lot, of uh, bringing things over to bargains and blessings and trying to get uh, set up. So I hope you had a happy 4th of July. I hope you are doing well. And we're going to jump into our lesson for tonight. Now, I decided to pull an old book out of my storage. As as I was in the moving process and going into a new home, this uh, book kept popping into my mind. And it's a little book called My Heart Christ Home uh, by Robert Boyd Munger. And uh, this book has had an impact in mighty ways in my life uh, as it helps me evaluate and look at the house of my body, um, my heart, uh, all of the parts of who I am. And as I just moved, like I said, it's caused me to think um, about the house that I'm currently living in and also the house of my body that I've given to Christ to live in. So let's jump into our lesson for tonight. So like I said, um, I've been thinking about what home looks like in the last few weeks as I just moved. And as of yesterday, like I said, I just took my last batch of uh, stuff over to the landfill and I feel pretty good about being done. But I was thinking about my house and what rooms are there in that house? Which are the rooms that are going to be the most used? Which rooms need the most work? Which rooms will I let others into? Uh, Which will I not let people see? And who is this house for? So I just wanted to share that with you in some of these images of of my new place as we get into this word. Because you see, in the letter to the Ephesians, Paul writes these words, that God may grant you to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Ephesians 3, verses 16 through 17. Or as another person has translated, that Christ may settle down and be at home in your heart by faith. You know, without question, one of the most remarkable Christian truths is that Jesus Christ himself through the Holy Spirit, and I love that we've been talking about the Holy Spirit over the last few weeks uh, at First Covenant Church here, but he will actually enter your heart. He will settle down and he will make his home there. Christ will live in any human heart that welcomes him. And Christ said to his disciples, if a man loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and he will come to him and make our home with him. John 14, 23. But he was also telling them that he would soon leave them. And it was difficult for the disciples to understand what Christ was actually saying. How was it possible for him both to leave them and make his home with them at the same time? You know, it's interesting that Jesus uses a similar concept here of home that he used earlier in John 14 when he said, I will go and prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you will be also. You see, he was promising that just as he was going to heaven to prepare a place for them, for those that believe in him and would one day welcome them there, it would also be possible for them to prepare a place for him right now in their own hearts. He would come and make his home with them right there. So he was always going to be with them. And you know, this was beyond the comprehension of even the disciples, guys that had spent three years uh, worshiping and growing and getting to know uh, this Jesus even better. How could it be that he could both be away from them and have him, but also live with them? Well, then we read about an amazing story in the book of Acts chapter 2. 
And that was the story of Pentecost. You see, the spirit of the living Christ was given to the church and they experienced what he had foretold. What, what looked like flames came down upon their tongues and these disciples were able to not only speak but understand all these different people, all these different languages. The Holy Spirit had come upon them and had blessed them in order that Jesus could be proclaimed to the nations, and now they understood. God did not dwell in the temple in Jerusalem, nor in any temple made with hands. Now, through the miracle of the outpoured spirit, God would dwell in human hearts. The body of the believer had become the temple of the living God, and the human heart, the home of Jesus Christ. You know, 30 minutes after Pentecost, the disciples knew more about Jesus than they had known in the three years previously. You know, it's difficult for me to think of a higher privilege than to make for Christ a home in my heart, to welcome him, to serve him, to please him, and to get to know him better there. You know, and I won't ever forget um, that evening that I invited Christ into my heart. You know what? It was a night where I had been reading uh, with my mom before bedtime, and I'd asked her, Mom, what does it mean uh, to be a follower of Jesus? What, how do I get into heaven? How do I know that I saved? And my mom walked me through it, and my mom prayed with me. And at that time, it was such a joyous moment. This, this entrance that, that Christ made into my life was a great thing, but you know, it was not a spectacular emotional thing, but it was very real. It was something that happened at the very center of my soul. He came into the darkness of my heart and he turned on the light. He then began to build a fire in the cold hearth and banish the chill. He started music where there had been stillness and harmony where there had been discord. He filled the emptiness with his own loving fellowship. You know what? I have never regretted opening the door to Christ, and I never will. You know, this, this is the this is the first step in making your heart Christ's home. He has said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and I will eat with him, and he with me. And if you want to know the reality of God and the personal presence of Jesus Christ, at the innermost part of your being, you need to open wide the door and ask Jesus to come in and be your Lord and Savior. You know, and then after Christ entered my heart in the joy of that newfound relationship, I said to him, Lord, I want this heart of mine to be yours. I want you to settle down here and be fully at home. I want you to use it as your own. Let me show you around and point out some of the features of this home so that you may be more comfortable. I want you to enjoy our time together. I wonder how many of you have done this for Christ in your life. You have invited him, into, invited him in. You have asked him to settle down and be fully at home. Would Christ be fully at home in you? Have you said to him, I want you to use this house as your own? Have you truly shown Christ everything about your life? Have you said, Jesus, I want you to truly enjoy our time together so this home is yours? You know what I found when I gave my life to Christ? That he was glad to come in. And he seemed very delighted to be given a place in my ordinary little heart. And tonight what I want you to think about is, first of all, have you given your heart to Christ? Have you turned your life over to him? Have you opened up all the doors? Have you shown him all the rooms so that he can be comfortable, so that he can begin to do some great work in and through you? Well, over the course of the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at these different rooms in our life and maybe some of the things we need to work on. And I want you to start thinking about that right now. 
What are some of those areas in your life you need to work on? We're going to be looking at the study, our mind. We're going to be looking at the dining room, our appetites and desires. We're going to learn about, be looking at the rec room, where we like to go and what we like to do. We're going to be looking at the living room, the way we spend our daily lives. We're going to be looking at the bedroom, some of those personal things, and even deeper into the hall closet and those things that we just don't tell anybody. And I want to encourage you guys, like I said, right now, I want you to think, have you invited Jesus Christ into your heart? If not, man, I would love for you to contact me, and I would love to be able to walk you through that. I would love for you to be able to start that journey. And if you have invited Jesus Christ into your heart, have you given him, given it to him truly to be his home? Start thinking tonight about some of those rooms that maybe need to be worked on and join us over the next few weeks as we dive into some of these rooms and talk about uh, the difficulty it is sometimes to turn those rooms fully over to God. I'm excited for this next uh, month of journey we're going to be going on together. I encourage you guys to join along with me in it. So let's pray and we'll be done with tonight. So God, I just pray that you would be speaking to us tonight. God, I pray for those out there that maybe are watching this and don't know for sure if they've invited you in their hearts, if they've fully turned their lives over to you, if they've given you access to all the rooms, if they've truly made you feel comfortable, Father God, if they are allowing you to work through the different rooms of their life. God, I pray for them. I pray that they would make a choice to seek after you and see the great joy in knowing that you are with them forever. And Father God, for those of us that have made a decision to follow you, help us to begin to evaluate right now the rooms of our life. And God, maybe what we need to do to improve them, to clean them up, to fully turn them over to you. So God, I pray, pray that you'd be with us in this journey. Ask your blessing upon the rest of this week. In your name we pray. Amen. You guys are loved. You guys are missed. And I am praying for you. Have a great night.